Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 20 of this NHL 22 Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we moved the Arizona Coyotes up north to Quebec City. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner. It has been way too long since we did a video like this, but if you do enjoy this one, make sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new to show your support, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. So, today we get into the 2027 playoffs. 2027, we're so far into this one already. We are 20 episodes in. It doesn't feel like it though, which is actually crazy. So, taking a look at this lineup, I honestly kind of forgot what is going on here. Um, but right now, you know, the lines look pretty darn good. I mean, they could be better, but again, we're running with some pretty young talent here overall. We actually have some comments to get through too today, but there was the uh, the kind of system change that threw all our lines off, which I have found quite interesting in dealing with, especially considering we have some really good defensemen coming up through the system too. And there's the potential at a top end player here as well since we made that Detroit trade. Um, again, if you guys have missed any episodes, go back and check them out. But yeah, like this draft class coming up, it's solid. It's not insane, but it's it's pretty darn good, and we could potentially land Valentanko, which we probably don't need. I think we would be more likely to try and potentially land, like, Shishkinov, maybe, or I don't know who else we'd even go for. We might go for, like, a winger, like, Tamarina. So it's not going to be the end of the world if we don't win the franchise player. Sure, it would be sick to get a guy like that. I mean, it is a little concerning that Capo Bianco, or Capaduchis, sorry, not Capo Bianco, that Capaducha doesn't have X factors and is supposed to go in the top top end of the draft. I mean, Vandenbush would be really nice, and I think we'll probably land him. But, you know, Shishkinov's got some pretty decent X factors there, too, and could potentially turn out to be a really good defenseman. So, I mean, the draft coming up's good. Obviously, we don't want to go out early this year because we just kind of sucked the last couple of years. Like, sure, we did end up making it. Where did we make it to? in the playoffs we made it to round three and got swept by the sabers last last season which is actually pretty crazy considering we finished in the exact same spot again and we're now one and one against buffalo in playoff series in this franchise mode so it's actually not bad but let's get to some comments here and uh help that kind of direct the episode all right so the biggest comment here came from Ivan, who said, I think Shane Wright needs to go. He is underperforming and making too much money. So that's a really bold and interesting comment. Carter Green also commented on it, saying, very bold, but I wouldn't mind it. Maybe put him on the trade block so he knows he's in rough waters for around three to six weeks. And if he doesn't start to heat up, get rid of him. So that's a very, very interesting comment. I don't know if we can actually... We can't even put him on the block right now. I think we're going to put him on the block um, probably heading into the offseason more so. But man, that that is a real plot twister and an interesting one that I'm actually kind of excited to pursue. And yeah, sure, he's on a $6.5 million deal. He bumps up to 6.8 next year. But he's a number one overall pick, which is kind of crazy because, you know, top end number one overall picks like Shane Wright usually kind of turn out. So he's got two more years, but we could very well move him if we have to. Obviously, other guys like Chitrin and, you know, Bedard's on eight and a half, so he's actually really well worth it. But other guys like Chitrin are making a lot of money. Same with, I mean, eh, I don't know Quentin Byfield. He's actually been pretty good. We added some X factors to him, which has helped him perform a little bit better, but he hasn't been the hottest player on this team by any means. I mean, even a guy like Barrett Hayton has been better, right? Like, I think Hayton actually outscored Shane Wright this year. Maybe not, 47 points. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. How many points does Shane Wright have? He had 60. Okay, so he had 60 and 80. Sure, he's not performing like a true number one pick, like kind of like Connor Bedard is, like Bedard. Bedard's a true guaranteed number one pick. And again, he hasn't been the most spectacular either. So there is some, some interesting storylines to play with here. If anything, the guy that's kind of overperformed is Ricard Thorson, who's looked really good up to this point. I don't know if he actually, does he even have more points than, I don't think he has more points. He's got like 274. Oh no, he does. He just has more points than Bedard. But um, yeah, honestly, a lot of these guys haven't been like top end performers throughout their careers, but the team has done well consistently. And that's all that really matters to me personally. But if you guys think the stats are, you know, that important, then sure, we'll, we'll look into it. So 
Uh, another comment came from Maniac Gamer saying, Etanios, I love your content. Congrats on hitting 2K subscribers. Thank you, Maniac. I appreciate it. And uh, all your guys' support has helped push this channel up to 2,000 subscribers. I can't believe we hit it. But we did, and we're actually almost... We're, we're getting closer to 2100 already you guys are just insane you're crushing it with the subscriber count and i love it so the final comment here uh we had was a little bit more based on teams and arenas uh so it was z dog yx saying hey i have a question i'm playing nhl 22 franchise mode and i want to edit my team's arena how is that possible so you have to have owner mode on to do it and it's nearly impossible because you have to generate so much team funds to actually change your arena. Like, set it the first time if you're relocating or setting up your team or whatever. But, like, when we go to arena customization, it is bonkers how expensive it is. Like, we have point one, like we have $140,000 about, right? You look at our arena here. It costs so much money to actually, like, change the base setting of the arena it it's insane like it costs like 15 million dollars or something like it, it might even be more than that it might even be in the hundreds of millions so anyways it's very difficult to do you have to have owner mode on to change your arenas and facilities but overall it's just not worth it in my opinion it's better to spend the money on scouts and staff and facilities and things like that rather than the actual arena so now that we're through all those comments we get to get back to some action. It has been far too long, and, well, we've got the Buffalo Sabres. And, again, this team knocked us out last year in the conference finals, stopped us from getting our goal of a Stanley Cup, and, of course, the Edmonton Oilers went on to win it. So, ooh, what, what is going on there? Matthew Ward playing way up in the lineup. But taking a look, again, this is a very solid team. Um, Isaac Rosen. Yeah, he's going to be good. He would be even better if he had some of my roster edits there. Same with Jack Quinn. But they're still a really deadly team. And Philip Forsberg, Sammy Coulton, and Jack Eichel. Again, Jack Eichel missed like I didn't. It wasn't in the update when we first started this franchise mode, the Jack Eichel trade that occurred just after. But um, interesting. They've got a really shaky-looking backup goalie by the looks of it. So, you know, if Sorokin wanted to get injured, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. But... At the same time, that's also just evil. So let's uh, let's get to this. They've got a great team. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Now it's more so just a matter of which team is going to perform better. So let's get to the simulation. We're going to do this regular kind of setup as far as simulate mostly games until we're either facing elimination or have the opportunity to eliminate the Buffalo Sabres, and then we might jump into some gameplay. But starting off game one, again, we've got home ice advantage. We finished fourth place in the league i believe like second or third in the eastern conference but first period buffalo's up 3-1 as jack eichel ian mitchell and joel armia all get goals byron potty gets a shorty for us but that's just not good enough five shots in the first period only for the quebec Nordiques. we get an out shot 11 to 5 too ouch second period make it a second to two game what is going on right now we just let in seven goals on 19 shots and samson off still in net Oh boy, oh boy, I mean, Barrett Hayton scores one, I don't think we're getting five goals in the third period, nope, they get one more, so do we, power plays each, but yikes, that was um, a very rude awakening for the Quebec Nordiques, in game one, we lose eight to three, and uh, Forsberg, Eichel, Cousins make us look silly, so that was brutal, um, and we're going to really have to turn it around and step up our game if we don't want to go down 2 nothing nice and quick. So, um, terrible start, but let's truck on here, hopefully get a better result in Game 2, bounce back on home ice, that would be fantastic. So, first period of Game 2, it's a 1-1 game. Byfield opens the scoring, Yogi Haru ties it up, they outshoot us 12-11 after the first. Second period, make it a 3-3 game, as Coltonen and Cousins made it 3-1, and then the Nordiques bounce right back with goals from Kairu and Wright. Let's see if we can maintain the lead here. I would love to get the lead to start with. But if we're not getting enough shots, Sammy Coltonen is going to take it from us. And what do you expect? Make it 5-3. Oh my god, our team is falling apart here. I don't understand it. 6-3, Jack Eichel. Oh my god, what is going on? Are you serious right now, man? Are you serious? 6-3. to We are struggling with the Buffalo Sabres, like, big time. This is bad. Six plus goals in two games now. Oh boy. Okay, that is 
that's bad. Um, so we're going to start changing up the lineup now because that can't happen, and it just did. And we are down 2 nothing in two blowouts, to be completely honest. Three-plus goal difference in the playoffs is bad. All right, I'm kind of making the executive decision here to try running Connor Bedard at center. Um, there's not really a lot else we can change with this lineup without losing a whole ton of chemistry. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else we should really do here. Um, the only thing I can think is maybe we start Gustafson instead. So we'll advance up to the next game, make the change. Um, but, yeah, that's just just such a bad start I can't believe how badly we lost so um yeah let's sim up to the next game and Winquist is available you say okay okay I see him um that's actually interesting especially since Winquist is a decent player too he's up to a 68 now he's actually grown significantly for a 21 year old so let's see if that makes any real difference or not um apart from that Georgievic, you know, up to a 79, but nothing crazy either. So, yeah, we're in a we're in a tight and tough spot here with this team right now. All right, so heading into game three now. Of course, we do need to. Um, I don't know why I hit view lines. We do need to edit the goaltending just slightly here because that's yeah, Samsonov let in so many goals. It's bad. So. <sighs> Give Gustafson the start. Wow, he made three saves when he got pulled after like seven goals or eight goals. Brutal. Okay, so. So here we go. Gustafson's in net now, and uh, we better simulate better because that was just atrocious. So, first period of game three, and my... Xbox crashes. Did you just tell me my game needs to be online? Are you... Bruh. Bruh. What do you mean? I'm pretty sure I'm connected to the internet. Don't tell me the Wi-Fi just shit the bed. No, it didn't. Why? Give me a break. Okay, here we go. I don't know why that did that, but first period. 2-1 Buffalo lead. Yet again, we're behind. This isn't looking good, honestly. So, <sighs> Mitchell and Forsberg score. Ian Mitchell scored every single game so far against us. That's terrible. So, we out shoot him 8-7. to seven. Still down a goal. Lovely. All right. Second period. Make it a 4-3 Buffalo lead. And we are more than likely going to be down 3-0 here unless we can turn it around. But, no. Nope. Isaac Rosen makes it 5-3. Oh my god, okay, at least Thorson gets a shorty, and we tie it up. Two shorthanded goals in one power play. That's got to be a record in the playoffs. That's insane. Okay, do we find any hope in that, or is Buffalo just going to stomp all over us again? 5-5 five, five game. This is the highest scoring series I've maybe ever seen. Um, Are we going to OT? And it just did it again. I'm also, I think the reason this is happening is because I'm also setting up my Xbox Series X right now, so that would probably be why this keeps cutting in and out, but let's get to overtime, see what happens, and power play for the Nordiques doesn't convert, how do you not convert in overtime on the power play, oh, okay, did we win, I think we did, yes, we did, Connor Bedard, thank you, finally, we have some hope, Somehow it's a 2-1 series. It should be a 3-1 series, to be completely honest. We have been way too close on all of these games, and it's going to keep doing this. Sweet. Okay. All right, guys, at this point, I don't even know where we are in this series anymore. I think it's uh, game four because it's taken so long for my internet to get working again that uh, I'm surprised the save's even here still. So, anyways, first period, 2-2 game. Jack Quinn opens the scoring. Soderstrom and Wright get goals for us, and then Jerlou gets um a shorty there so that kind of stings but we out shoot him 15 to 7 second period make it a 2-2 game still so heading into the third all we need is a couple goals that would be nice and that's a great start Soderstrom two goals in the game that's huge power play for Buffalo does not convert that's also a huge penalty kill there so the team is actually starting to kind of bounce back but maybe it's the home ice curse like that's very well what could be happening? Nope, it's not, as Joel Armia gets the goal. 
Ooh, this is a really, really close one, and we are significantly out shooting the Sabres here. So, do we get a goal? No, we don't. Okay, so we head into OT. Let's see what happens. I mean, again, we're not facing elimination yet. Power play for the Nordiques. Come on, that's triple power play. Oh my god, six minutes of power play, we don't convert. That's crazy. And we're still going. 44, 45 shots. Do we win it? No, we don't. Isaac Rosen puts us against the wall here again. Oh my god, brink of elimination to the Buffalo Sabres. A team that finished lower than us, but has seemed to have bested us almost every time we play them, so... Ooh, this is this is rough here. Like this is not good, and we lose Chitrin to a wrist sprain. He's been our best player up to this point, and now he's not in the lineup anymore. So, I mean, real struggle here going on. This is uh, this is bad. This is not the position we want to be playing at all. But what do we do, right? Like, there's not much we can do at this point. So. Yeah, the struggle is going to be real here heading into uh, the next game. I mean, Samsonov's kind of choked it out every time here. Um, extra attacker, really? You don't fill that slot when you replace players? I guess not. That's cool. Okay. Sure, let's put Keller in there. Zero. Our only other 90-rated player. You know, the team isn't actually that insane yet. They're good all around, but... Apparently not, as we're down 3-1. Um, the Senators get swept there, and the Kraken gets swept, so everybody else is going to at least 5, um, including us, as we're down 3-1, to one, heading home to Quebec. So, can we actually get a result here? That is the real question. Chitrin's been kind of carrying the team here with assists. Hasn't scored yet, and he's not in the lineup. So, first period, one nothing Buffalo. Great start. 8-8 eight, eight on shots. What more can you say? Second period... It's a 1-1 game. Barrett Hayton gets us into this. So I'm jumping in. I'm not risking getting knocked out in four, five, or six games even. Um, we are facing elimination. And for whatever reason, Chitrin's showing up. Were my headphones on? I guess they were. Um, anyways, I'm not risking getting knocked out in four, five, or six games. I mean, this is game five. But we just cannot afford to lose to the Sabres here again. So we're playing on All-Star. Let's see what we can do. Statistically, we have the better team, too. So I don't know exactly what's going on or why it is like this. But, uh, oh, we started off hot here. I am not used to playing NHL. Dear God. Soderstrom, great spin move. Victor Soderstrom right to the net for the shorty. Let's go. What a play. I did not expect him to actually pull that off, but he did. Victor Soderstrom gets his fourth of the playoffs, makes Sammy Colton and look like an absolute goof, and same with Ilya Sorokin. That was perfect. That was exactly what we needed. We needed a boost. Oh, excuse me. We needed a boost, and that, uh, that is a little bit more wiggle room. So, we still got to kill off a penalty here. Brewer can't make the play. That's cool. Here comes Kairu, Jordan Kairu cutting down. Great try again. Oh my god, another one? Oh, come on. He's trying so hard to kill that off. And immediately it's a 2-2 game, so. Noah Hannafin makes it look way easier than it should be, but that's also all-star for you, so. Oh man, okay. 2-2 game. 321 left. We still got lots of power play time to kill off here, so. Oh, that's a great pass now, isn't it, Shanahan? Hey. Dude, interference big time. Good defense, good plays. Here comes Bedard. Oh, you got you gotta be kidding me with that much time left, man. Holy fucking where's the penalties, man? I don't get it. I don't think that Hannafin shot should have gone in. I think Samsonov should have had it. But anyways, very even game heading into OT here. Let's see if we can uh, find the decider and not lose the series. But honestly, who knows? Um, these games always seem to go in the uh, other team's favor. So let's see what we can do. 
All right, game five OT underway, five on five. All right, good pick by Keller. Can you stop? Like, that's just nobody enjoys fucking pin up against the wall hockey. All right, here, here comes Bedard, Connor Bedard, cutting around, making it look way too easy. Back to Soderstrom. That just went in. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. But man, Victor Soderstrom's found the net way too many times based on the quality of chances he's had. I can't believe that actually went in. That was such an absolute lame goal. But we'll take it. Um, very, very simple goal. I literally just shot it from the point. And, oh man, Sorokin, what are you doing? Like, actually, what are you doing? I want to watch that replay. Like, I can't believe that went in. Did, did that seriously go in? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's got it on the blocker, and they just hand us the game there. Just, whoops. I think it hit his stick, actually. Yeah, it did. That's why. His, his own stick redirected that into the net. Okay, we'll take it. Uh, at least this series goes to six. So, 3-2. Um, backs against the wall. We get handed an absolute gift there from Ilya Sorokin. Um, just a very simple shot on net. Samsonov saw way better chances than that one. And we'll take it. So, moving on now. Um, we got to beat Buffalo here in back-to-back. -back. It's doable, but, man, we have, we have stunk it out, too, over the last couple. So, here we go. First period of Game 6, we're down 2 nothing. Great start. It's the home ice curse, I swear to God. Second period, okay, 3-2 game, I can deal with that, but Kairou and Hayden get the goals there, as well as Casey Middlestad, again, I believe that's the second of the game, so, yeah, they got they got a real nice team here in Buffalo, so, it would be nice if we had Chitrin back, but we don't, not yet. All right, in an attempt to win game number six, we step into the third period, down a goal, but up a man in advantage here. Hyman's so lucky he didn't just die there. We are even strength now, so Connor Bedard. Gonna pick this one off, come flying down the wing as usual. Cuts in. How did that one go in? I get it, he's got speed, but like that probably shouldn't have been a goal, honestly. What? <laughs> I love his speed, he's so fast. Um, but yeah, like look at this. Beats the defender out wide. I think he one hand kind of tucked that through Sorokin's legs. That's such a beautiful goal. I I genuinely don't know how else he could have scored that. So, 3-3 three, three game, Connor Bedard showing off his uh exceptional status kind of player type there, but man, what a what a play. Lambert gets run over, deservedly so. All right, Warren Fogel with 13 seconds left. Comes cutting in, looking for a play. Oh my god, that just about went in. Fuck me, okay. Alright, so, we head to overtime yet again. Um, it's been a very physically dominating game, as the hits have been going back and forth here. We apparently had six power plays, I don't remember six happening, so... Anyways, um, they've had seven, but we cannot take penalties, especially with how many chances they've had. So let's see what we can do here. Face off, going to go back, going to hit Connor Bedard. He's going to cycle, look for a play, just completely out edge his guy. Connor Bedard walks in, good shot. Thorison back in front to Bedard. He almost got that one. But now they're going to hold it. Gustafson looking for a play. Philip Gustafson barely makes that pass to Forsberg. All right, Coltonen, I see you. Oh, pick up a play, boys. Let's go. All right, here we go. Clayton Keller's got some speed here. Keller walks in. What a goal, Clayton Keller. Finally. Finally, we break the deadlock and we win this game in OT yet again. Push it to seven games. This has been a brutal series, but we're somehow in it still. Jeez. 
So yeah, just a really good performance there overall. We managed to win the game. Um, there's some big plays in that period, but let's go. We come back by two goals, win that game. We won 46 to 19 in faceoffs. That's pretty pretty different there. All right, so here we go, heading into game seven. Really, it didn't look like we had much of a chance of uh, actually making it here, but by the looks of it, our lineup is fully healthy and ready to roll, which is really good. Um, Samsonov has played significantly better over the last couple games, and do we have... <sighs> Chitrin could be back. I can't remember what his injury is, to be completely honest. So um, let's just double check. Is it a sprained ankle? Or what did he do? Wrist sprain. Um, he's back on May 2nd. It's probably not worth playing him in the lineup because we're three days off of that. And if we actually win this playoff series, then we move on. But um, um, no, we're not playing this one. Okay, we're, we're simulating for the most part. So let's see how it goes. If we're down heading into the second or third period, we'll probably jump in. But uh, let's see, first period, one nothing Buffalo, power play for Brad Lambert, same story, same thing. Like, that just keeps happening. So, 16 to 12 on shots. Let's see how the second goes. Second period, 1-1 one -one game. All right, Byron Potty. We got to advance past the first round. We cannot have a first round knockout, especially with the position the team is currently at. You can't finish fourth and not progress past the first round because... Well, that's that's just sad. So let's see what we can do here. Again, missing Chitrin. It's a bit of a downgrade on the team, but that's okay. We'll make it work. <sighs> let's see if we can actually win a playoff series here. All right, so here we go. Uh, fans are a little quiet right now in Quebec. I think they're kind of on the edge of their seats. All right, here comes Bedard the other way. He's got space. Connor Bedard right across to Keller. Let's go. 2-2 two -two game. Great play. Honestly, I kind of thought Keller was going to miss that. We just had that kind of luck. But, um, yeah, Connor Bedard, wheels, no doubt. I didn't even see how many assists he's got this playoffs, but that's what our top line does. So, really good finish there. That's what we expect from those guys. So, <sighs> we're still in it, despite giving up some pretty glitchy goals. But, face off here, Quentin Byfield is going to lose that one. Picks it. Good try. 1.4 seconds left. I was like, if anybody needs to have the puck on their stick right there, it's Bedard. So, one second left. I don't think we have time to fire off a shot, but you never know. Lander. And yeah, Bo Meester couldn't get it in time. So, we head to OT for the third game in a row. We've actually done pretty decent in overtime, but... Um, Let's see what we can do here, because this is just too close a game, and it comes down to Game 7. So, after clawing our way back from 3-1 down, we force OT in Game 7 on home ice. Let's see if the Nordiques have it in them to win this one. Face-off here, going to go back to Quebec. Connor Bedard, great win. That was a really nice first pass, and then Thorison messed it up. Right, Thorson up to Keller, nice pass, very nice passing. So Shanahan coming down the wall, looking for a play. He's going to shoot, good chance. Those those sharp angles kick out huge rebounds sometimes. So who is this? Hannafin and Cousins, yeah, that makes sense for hits. So, all right, Connor Bedard on the faceoff again against Eichel. He's kind of bested Eichel the whole time here. So Soderstrom through traffic. Oh, I thought that was the series right there. Bedard right out in front. Rebound. Thorison. Let's go. What a bad giveaway. Rasmus Dahlin chokes it. Oh, man. I almost feel bad for Buffalo, except for the fact that they knocked us out in the conference finals last year and got to attend the Stanley Cup final, even though they didn't win it. Bye-bye, Buffalo. So, <sighs> I thought for sure we were probably going to lose that game, especially when we were down 3-2 there for a while. But, uh... We will be moving on. Ricard Thorson gets the game winner. I mean, when you turn the puck over to Connor Bedard, I don't know what else you expect, but Thorson's just sitting there right on the doorstep like, thank you very much. I'll tap that one away. And uh, Quebec in not all white, but a lot of white. 
cheering the fans on there and uh yeah just some just some great plays here so we move on somehow that was a very stressful first round and honestly i think that's probably where we're gonna wrap this one up uh normally these episodes do not take nearly as long but um we we had some interruptions and issues but yeah that was uh that was a good series and we will move on to probably play a team like toronto or somebody like that i don't actually know who moved on but uh we'll figure it out so <sighs> so yeah connor bedard eight points in seven games he's uh really starting to come to his own make a difference here and he got an assist on that last uh game winner there in ot so we will be taking on the boston bruins next that's going to be an interesting series. Maybe it'll spark a rivalry. Obviously, we have the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs as probably our biggest rival at this point. You'd think it would be Montreal. Montreal hasn't been super competitive. So, Boston beat Toronto 4-1. to Okay, um, that's not exactly what I was expecting. Pretty much all the other teams moved on, except uh, I think San Jose was higher ranked than Dallas, so that was a bit of an upset and yeah boston was the only other upset i think that happened i might be wrong um and did we get knocked out no tucson moved on we lost game one against san diego and we're now up one nothing against henderson so the tucson roadrunners are looking good as well um i believe they actually had a better season than we did did they maybe not yeah they had 103 points they weren't overly spectacular i mean it does really suck that Toronto got bounced as the President's Trophy winners. And we're in fourth place. So the only teams ahead of us are Winnipeg and Carolina. We played a good series against Buffalo, too. Like, Buffalo is a good team. So, Boston's not much worse, honestly. They're in eighth place in the league. So, we got some tough series to go through here. Ow. Totally just punched my desk trying to save my headphones from sliding onto the ground. But, uh, that is what it is. So, um... I'm sure some of these player stats are just ridiculous too. Haven't really paid too much attention to them. Our guys, we've got four guys that are a point per game in here. And I love how you guys all make comments. Not all, but you guys make some comments about Shane, right? And then just immediately, oh, yeah, he, he starts performing. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so, anyways, uh, for the entire league, Karkner's got 12 points. Eichel had 12 points. Cal Connor's got 12 points. Oh my goodness, this is going to be freaking scary playing against Winnipeg if we have to. Fritched is looking really good, actually. Wow, 10 points in 7 games. Talk about carrying a team. Drysaddle, 9 points in 7 games. McCarr, 9 points in 6 games. Oh, baby, there are some good players throughout here. So, I can't believe Jason Robertson's actually an elite player. Like, that's he's probably a top 6, but... Matty Beneers carrying the Sharks with that accidental duplication draft pick. There's always errors here and there, so... And the fact that Connor Bedard got drafted second and is probably the better player than Sammy Coulton. I, I just thank you, Buffalo. That's all I can say. So, anyways, um, that's where we're wrapping it up. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll play boss the next series. If you did enjoy, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. But that's going to be it for me, and until next time.